Alrighty, a little bit of a change of pace. Um, I decided not to set up the dining table. I'm just gonna do it here on the couch. I think it's more comfortable. And honestly, I think it's like a little bit better ambiance. So today's timestamp, today's unboxing is a little bit different, specifically because this is not a new game. This is not a game in shrink. This is an old game, quite old. And as you can see, it's got some shelf wear on it. It's got quite a bit of white edging along the box. Um, this is not new. It is maybe, hmm, timestamp. In the last year, it's maybe become one of my most interested grail games or games that I wanted to get, but is hard to find. And specifically, because this isn't a big game overall in terms of the amount of components and the amount of content, I wanted to get all of it, if I could. It's hard to get all of this. If you guys aren't familiar with it, this is Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game. And it's from Fantasy Flight, and it's from kind of old school Fantasy Flight when they still had the Games Workshop license and were able to do Warhammer games. But it, it's out of print. You can't get it anymore. Fantasy Flight doesn't have the license anymore. It's the same reason why Forbidden Stars isn't being reprinted. And it's hard to get. And I started to develop interest in this game once I started to consider solo gaming as a little bit more of an activity or a hobby that I wanted to invest in and try out more because I'm playing a lot more board games and the idea of playing some of them by myself is relaxing and enjoyable and would give me a break from some of the other activities I do. Timestamp, I got water on myself. And so I finally recently was able to track down a trader, seller, gamer, you know, part of the community who had a copy of this and was pretty sure that he had all of the expansions. And the reason why that's important is some of these expansions go for more than the game itself. They are harder to find because they were print-on-demand expansions. And so they were harder to find than the actual expansion you can earn, than the actual base game. You can find this base game in used, sometimes even new condition. If you get lucky, if there's a shrink copies left, there were some on there. I mean, I think there were some that were as much as about $95 or more for a unopened copy of just the core game, Space Hulk Death, Death Angel. And then some of these expansions go for over $100 just by themselves. And it probably sounds exorbitant, but I was able to get all of this for $200, which I actually thought was kind of a steal. Because even though the box has got shelf wear on it and, you know, the expansions and all that are, you know, just kind of tucked away in a box, they're all sleeved and the, the, the like quality or the condition of the game is very, very little played, I believe, from what I've been able to ascertain in my conversation with the person I bought it from. Not a lot of play on the expansions and on the game itself, but it's all here, which is just rare. And so I ended up selling several of my games to somebody else to get the money in order to buy this. So th this was my little coup of the month in terms of finding um board game that I have been really wanting that is hard to get because I've already got Forbidden Stars, which is one of the only other Warhammer fantasy flight games era you know copies that i cared about i already had it because i lucked my way into it and in, when i first started the hobby i just happened to find that game and fell in love with it and now you can't get it anymore and i've got it um this was one that i was not aware of but now that i'm interested in playing things solo i wanted to get this and check it out so if you don't know what Space Hulk Death Angel is. And I mean, to, to some degree, I still don't even know what it is because I haven't ever played it before. 
but I wanted to I wanted to get it. So it says purge the Xenos threat. Incoming transmission level red. Blood Angels mission briefing 7362-1. Brother Sergeant Lorenzo, assemble your Terminator squad and assault Space Hulk plus plus Sin of Dan Sin of Damnation, I think. Via boarding torpedo, extreme gene stealer infestation on board. Your objective is to destroy the forward launch control rooms. Expect heavy resistance. Estimate, or estimates, 44% chance of mission success with 86% squad casualties in transmission. Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game, is a cooperative game in which one to six players control a squad of Terminator Space Marines venturing deep into a massive Space Hulk. Through teamwork, bravery, and raw firepower, players must survive against overwhelming odds to eliminate the gene stealer threat. Failure is not an option. So this is a cooperative card game, which most people consider it, even though it says one to six, a lot of people view it as like a solo game. So, I mean, I'll be happy to play this game with other people if they want, but man, you can tell how old this game is. I don't even recognize most of the games that are advertised on the box here. You've got Red November, which looks like maybe a interesting alternate dystopian Soviet era Cold War something fight, or maybe not at all. Looks kind of like a submarine though. Um, oh, I wonder if it's a playoff of Red October. Red November, it looks like a steampunk submarine. Chaos Marauders. Now I've played Chaos in the Old World, which I, I thought was okay. That's another one that is a Warhammer FFG game that's out of print now, that is very hard to find and very expensive. Even more so expensive than this, substantially more expensive. But I am happy to announce that I didn't care for it in the sense that I don't want it and don't need to spend a bunch of money to get it. Timestamp. So I, I'm definitely intrigued to get started on this. Intrigued to get started on this. You know, I, I will say that there are several things about this game that people get frustrated by. I think the the dice, the die of the die of death, or you know, rolling that dice is apparently a pretty brutal and punishing thing. But I've played Dead of Winter, so I am used to punishing painful dice. And then also, I think another thing, you know, a lot of people have trouble winning this game, which I think goes along with quite a few hard solo card games. You know, I've played Friday and people talk about how difficult Friday is. Um, and other solo games seem to, some of them seem to have a pretty brutal learning curve and uh, low chance of winning. But I'm just excited because the base game is already tough enough. But the expansions give additional Space Marines or, you know, ultra, you know, Terminator Marines, Space Marines that you can bring in. I've got the Death Angel Deathwing Space Marine pack, which includes 12 Deathwing Space Marine cards, 18 Deathwing action cards, and 6 Deathwing team cards. And like I said, this is one of the ones that is very hard to find because they came in plastic, clamshell, print-on-demand expansion packs and... You just couldn't really find them. And then the other one that I have here is the other one that I'm really excited about. This one and this one are the two most rare. This is the Tyranid Enemy Pack. And this essentially makes the game harder. Um, it really increases the difficulty and variability of the monsters, of the Tyranid, uh, you know, the gene stealers that are in there. Um... And so this makes it much more difficult. This one, the Deathwing, it says, it introduces the legendary Deathwing Terminator Space Marines to Death Angel the card game. Explore all new tactics with an alternate set of action cards, each with unique abilities that will aid your combat teams in their fight against the Gene Stealer threat. And then this one is all about the enemies. And this one is the Death Angel Space Marine Pack 1. This includes two new combat teams and their action cards, eight combat team cards which replace the original six combat team markers it's got the space marine pack icon and then how to use this expansion this includes two new combat teams for your copy of space hulk to use them replace the original combat team markers 
with the new combat team cards to deal out random combat teams. The new combat teams forms follow all the rules for normal Space Marines using the provided action cards. So this is the third expansion. And then the other one that I have here is the Mission Pack 1, which I believe increase in, increases or expands the location and the um, elements in which you kind of go about it from a mechanical standpoint, not necessarily just the base cards of the enemies or the Space Marines. And so I'm excited for this one as well. And then the final one that you have in here, this is not an expansion. These are just the components, the little tokens and the dice. So everything in here is sleeved, which, you know, puts it into a pretty good condition versus unsleeved, heavily used cards. So I have all of these. And then I have this base box, but I'm kind of wanting to find an alternate storage solution for the game. Because I want to take care of this game, especially if I like it. If I like it, I definitely want to take care of it because I want to play it for as long as possible. But if I don't like it, I want to take care of it because then it will be in a good condition and I can give it on to somebody else. And so the person that I bought it from had it stored in this box. And this serves the purpose of, you know, holding it. But it looks pretty rough around the edges. It's got some like nice little corner jointing there um, between the different separate pieces of wood. And then it's got a decently thick, you know, board piece on the bottom and top. But I want to do something else. I either want to refinish this and sand it down and, you know, stain it and make it a nicer box so that it doesn't feel so gritty and dirty with some of the stain or glue that was used to craft it. Um, so I want to refinish this or I just, I don't have access to it right now, but there, I, I, I need like a CNC router or, you know, the ability to laser cut MDF because on BGG, there is a community member there that made a, or gave a file away, you know, creative commons license file. So, you know, seeks attribution, but you don't have to pay for it. It's just a free file. And it creates a MDF storage solution for sleeved base game and all of the expansions. And it's got, you know, artwork on the top. It looks essentially like a broken token or, you know, a Raptor, E-Raptor. I can't remember the name of the other ones. It's just any of those laser cut MDF wood organizers. It looks like one of those, but it's a free license created by a community member who likes the game. So, timestamp. That is definitely my goal, is to try to create a nice storage solution because this is starting to look beat up and I kind of want to keep the box as long as I can, but everything won't fit in there. So I need a different storage solution and maybe this box is it. Um, if I make it nice and sand it down and stain it and stuff like that, and maybe, I don't know, maybe do something with the, with the clasps there, or I want to create a, a different storage solution. So this is probably the most ex excited I've been for a game that's come in in a little bit because it's hard to find. I feel like I got a good deal on it and it comes from... It's a, it's a lot of money to put down for a game you've never played, 100%. I recognize that. But I could always get the value back out of it for other people that want it, so that doesn't concern me as much. But the thing that I'm interested in and I'm excited about is that this comes from the time period of some of my favorite games from Fantasy Flight. And it's also, uh, to you know to talk about the designer, Corny, Corny, yeah. Corey Konieska, he has designed, he worked on Forbidden Stars. He designed Star Wars Rebellion. And he's had a hand in a couple other games. And I love all of those. And so if I was going to like a game, it would be a Warhammer Fantasy Flight Games from this time period when they had the Game Workshop license designed by Corey, Kone Corey Konieska. So I'm very excited for this. Probably my biggest win yet in terms of getting a older game that you can't get your hands on anymore. I think it's maybe the only one I've tried to get my hands on that you can't get anymore. I'm, I recently got 
like Zia Legends of Drift system, Drift system, and I'll do a video on that at some point. But I just traded for that very recently. But this is like she is doing a reprint. This is you can't get this anymore. So I'm very much excited about it. But timestamp. We'll see how's it go, how it's how it's going whenever I'm able to uh, find a storage solution for this. So. I think for now we'll just do a thumbnail and move on to the next video. Mm. So I am excited, very much excited. And oh, speaking of excited, Daniel Burra, Daniel and Allison from Kids Planning, they just published the video that we did for mind management the play the game series and that is now out so as of this video it's already out because uh, it was published earlier today and so that's the second video in our play the game series you should 100 percent check it out because daniel did a fantastic job editing it and i think it really shows what we could possibly do once we get you know once we get this under our under our belts and we start to understand you know get into a system or a groove for this studio production. I think that, I think it could be good. So yeah, hope you guys have a fantastic day and let me know what you think of this new setting. I wonder if I'll blur the background or if I'll just keep it. I might just keep it, I don't know. But yeah, let's move on to the next video, so. Bye.